They're finally here. The trio of graphitint prints that I have been working on for a long time are now available in the stash shop today because it's Sunday and that's the day we put stuff up. So if you want to go and grab an A5 trio of these lovely drawings, then you can head over there just now. Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem. Today's a bit of an accidental video and I've become quite spontaneous this last little while so it's going to be good fun and I have been enjoying the more sort of like fun videos recently. So what's happened is I ordered some notebooks for Mr Gem and for the boys outside and they like to have little A6 like hardback you know notebooks and it's just so that they basically last a bit longer and if they drop them you know they're going to be okay and in my infinite wisdom I ordered the wrong size. So I now have several of these and they're just cheap notebooks they're nothing exciting but they're actually quite handy and I am a chronic list writer so I've pinched one for myself but they've got this really nice cover on them they've got a little elasticated strap and they're lined and they've got a bookmark as well and this kind of surface takes Posca pens really well. So I think what I would like to do is maybe customise one or two of these and I've picked the blue one just because I've been quite inspired. I've mentioned this before but I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing recently on the Nintendo Switch and one of my favourite things to do is go diving in the sea for all the sea creatures. So I thought we could maybe do something like that in Posca and make this into a lovely scene. I also want to thank you all very, very much for your lovely comments and wishes regarding my neck and my shoulder. I am getting better and I'm allowed to do very, very careful light things now. Uh, so I'm starting this week back on what I call baby yoga. So very basic yoga just to get my neck and my shoulder moving. The opportunity to not do anything. A lot of you said, you know, don't worry about videos and everything. I was absolutely bored rigid. So this was like one of the only things and maybe wasn't the best for my neck, but I had to do it because otherwise I would have absolutely been bored rigid. But thank you so much for your well wishes. I really, really appreciate that. We need to think about design. Now, this might seem like a bit of an odd choice, but to sketch out our design, I've actually picked out an 8B pencil. Normally, when we're sketching, we want a, a fine, quite a hard tip so that we've got very clean lines. But because this is a soft touch cover, if you were to poke the end of a pencil into it, it's actually going to leave an indent on the cover, which we don't want. So this is nice and soft. It's a bit smeary. But I can put a mark on here. It's very, very light. You guys are hardly going to be able to see that. But if you've got a needed eraser, you can take it away as well. We're kind of um, kind of doing things a bit backwards in terms of sketching out. So we just want to put in some rough details. We are going to do most of the work with the Posca pens themselves. And the great thing about Posca pens is that, or any other paint pen, I say Posca pen and I'm kind of using that interchangeably. So yeah, we just want to mark out a few areas here. Because they are opaque, then we can use the paint pens on top of each other and we can build the image up in layers. And that's kind of part of the fun. Plus as well, there's some really fun bright colours too, which yeah. You know. So I'm thinking to myself, we're going to have our seabed. I don't want it to just be a flat bottom because that's boring. So I'm going to have like a couple of sort of foreground areas here. So literally just marking out a few areas. I see I'll have my little ducat in the bottom here. Now this is kind of reminiscent of the recent uh, upcrate battle that we did. You know, it's the same sort of feeling to it. And that's probably why I've wanted to do this as well. I felt a little bit limited with the pencils that we had. And I think I'll, I'll keep on the the, uh, the bubbles theme as well. I'll just pop a few of those in. But again, I can add them in at my leisure, but I'm just trying to build up a picture in my head of what I want here. I would like to have a, an octopus of some description. And I think I'll have their legs like wrapping round onto the, the back of the book as well. That might be quite nice. That might be quite cool. Maybe we could have some spiky sea urchin type things here. And then we'll have someone peeking out from behind the, the greenery. I don't know what yet. And our octopus friend's probably going to have to be, well, he has to be on this side if he's going to wrap around. And the beauty is because we're layering it up, we can add to it as we go along. But we've got to think about the background first and the actual landscape before we start adding in our creatures. So we need to start thinking about colours as well. I do have quite a broad range of colours. So for the sea, I would like there to be some sort of gradient. The other thing as well is I do have these sparkly ones. Oh, that's nearly the same colour. I don't know if you can see that, but the cap's actually got sparkles on it to denote that there's a bit sparkly paint. So I'll dig out some colours here and we'll have a little test out and see what's going to work.
Now, the, the one thing that I am up against, up against here is the fact that a lot of these pens have different nib widths, but that can add a little bit of interest. That doesn't have to be detrimental. I do feel like the two loop markers, which are these two here, these, these are quite chunky and I think they're going to be a little bit clunky. So I may not employ them, plus the fact this one's too green for, for, for a background anyway. So I'm going to use this purple and this is a 1M, so this is like the, 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 lit, the little nib. I, I really like these for details and colouring pages as well. So for the background colours here, I think I'm going to go with the purple and I'll go into this dark blue and then into this sort of slightly grey tinted blue and then into this pale blue and we'll work our way up there. It's not going to go all the way up, but I'll show you. I'll show you when we get there. I want to put the sand color down at the bottom. So I've got these paler ones here. Okay, these are excellent colors. These three here. So we're going to have to be careful. When I say we, I mean me. Obviously, I'm going to have to be careful about where I'm putting my hand when I'm doing this. So I'm going to start with this really pale color, and I'm just going to start to put in our sand. Now I'll probably have to do this in a couple of layers in terms of getting the opacity that we're looking for. So when I'm doing this, even as I'm making these marks. I'm thinking about the texture of the sand because if we do if we don't have a consistent lay down you want it to look at least like the the surface that it's supposed to be so in this case this is our sand if you've ever been to the beach you'll know that if the water has run over the sand it leaves like ripples and a sort of ridged pattern I think it's so pretty that's like one of the things I really like is like nice patterns in nature like that the nice thing about Posca pens as well is that they do dry quite quickly now I think for the rocks here I'm going to use this slightly more orangey colour and I'll maybe want this as solid as possible but again I'm going to vary the direction of the strokes the other thing that's happening here today is just while I'm sitting you know chugging away here uh, I have the new lighting set up on today now my hope is that it's not that different for you guys watching other than the fact if I just lift this away you'll be able to see that there's two very soft reflections here in the general scheme of things I'm hoping that when you watch the videos the the light just looks a bit more even but the fact that I won't digitally enhance the lighting you know when I put the videos into editing so I'm hoping that you actually won't notice much difference which sounds a bit silly but that's it that's my hope for it so you can let me know in the comments if you noticed it before you know like before I mentioned it um, and also if you think it looks a little bit better than previous videos it's definitely uh, from the perspective of actually working although this desk sits at the cave window the the weather recently for especially for me has been very very wintry and very wet and what that means is it's also very dull so I'm not getting as much natural light as I probably would at this time of year. So this has been an absolute godsend and I notice it just working away. It's so nice to be to be bathed in soft light. Easily pleased guys, easily pleased. This is fun. I'm really enjoying this. The other really nice thing about this just for me just now is that I, uh, because we're working in paint pen, I'm not having to put any pressure down in my hand and that's really helpful for my neck and shoulder. I am able to sit for about half an hour at a time now, which is really nice. And I'm just building that up very slowly. I'm being very careful because I don't want to ruin everything. I don't want to ruin my hard work. So that's the plan. Oh, we're still, oh, we're still sticky. Okay. Oh no, I've just left a thumbprint in that. That's slightly depressing. Uh, right, for my gradient background, and I've got just a wet wipe here and a plastic ruler. Now this is quite important because I want to do this kind of like broken line gradient. One of the things that may happen is the, the nib of the pen may touch the ruler and obviously that's going to leave paint on the ruler. So it's really important that it's clean so that we don't end up with cross contamination and having to try and take stuff off in one thing and another. So that's, that's really, really important. And I'm just randomly making these lines. I'm not making them a certain length, but I am leaving them quite spaced out on this very top section. And as we get to the bottom, the breaks between these lines are going to get closer together until when we're in the purple at the bottom. That's not going to be solid, but it'll be quite close to being a solid line. And what I'm noticing when I'm doing this is I am going to have to change the direction of my strokes. I can't have them all going right to left because you can see it because obviously again, being a paint pen, this is really, really awkward. I could turn the book around, but I'm frightened that I put my hand in this. Let's try. Okay, so I'm moving on down. Now this one's got a slightly bigger nib on it. So we are going to have slightly larger lines, but that's okay. So I'm about halfway down the notebook now. So I'm starting to make my broken lines a little bit 
closer together but also the gaps between each of the sections of the line are also kind of a bit closer together too and down into the purple and I've left a gap so that we can overlap each colour once so you can see here the lightest blue stops here and the next colour down starts there but I'm also going to put a light blue line in there and it's just to make it a little bit more gradual and these are going to be super close together this is a lot easier if you have um, have quite a steady hand, which I don't. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use a ruler. If it wasn't in paint and if there wasn't so many, I probably would just freehand it because I am a person that likes to freehand lines. And I have to say, with a pencil, my, my st straight lines obviously use that term loosely, but they're actually not bad at all. And that's just because from when I started drawing, I always tried... And I practiced drawing straight lines freehand and I have to say I'm not too bad at it. But for something like this where you need a bit of precision and also the fact that you're working in paint as well, you know, you're not just uh, not just going to be erasing stuff the same way as you would. Oh no, I've got a smudge. I was trying to, I can't believe I got all the way down the page and didn't have a single smudge and now I'm here and I've got one. That's upset me quite considerably. The other thing that you can do is if you've got some surgical spirit or if you are elsewhere rubbing alcohol is what it's called. Yeah, that's not taking that off. Um, you can take it off with some of that with a cotton bud. Okay, so I'm going to try with some surgical spirit here just to get this, this smudge off. I absolutely love the smell of this stuff. Considering I'm a person that doesn't like chemically smells, it's, that might be kind of weird. So I'm just taking the excess off in the back of my hand because I have just literally dipped that cotton bud in there and I don't want it taking away anything else because we're in quite close proximity here. Okay, better. It's taken away enough so that we can continue on and no one's going to be like, oh, there's a massive smudge there. Now, a lot of this is to do with the surface that you're working on because some surfaces will take extra layers better than others. Sometimes you may find that when you go to put a second layer of your pen down, it's actually lifting the layer underneath. Things that help that are extending the drying time. So although it looks dry, if you maybe leave it, you know, like an hour or something like that, it's got better adhesion to the surface. You know, the paint has better adhesion, I mean. And you might find you get on better layering it up. But we're good because this is quite a smooth surface as well. The Posca's having the chance to stick to itself and it's not having to contend with, you know, like lumps and bumps in the paper. Okay, so we'll turn this upside down to give my, my back row of sand some drying time. And I'm just going to finish off my, my little purple lines here. I'm having mega smudgy problems down the bottom here and it's upsetting me slightly. I've got no idea why all of a sudden things aren't going the way they should. But I am not going to worry about it. I'm just going to make it part of the effect. <laughs> so there we go, we're down at the bottom anyway. Now unfortunately I only have grey in this massive, massive chunky marker. Uh, this is a 5M I think, yeah. But I really just want to, I want to have a little bit of shadow there. And again there's going to be things in front of it so it's not a huge deal. So you can see I'm overlapping that slightly over what we've done already and that's just to cover up the, the areas where I've gone cautiously if you see what I'm saying. So I'm just trying to cover up as much of the blue of the notebook cover as possible with this here. So we'll get a couple of layers down before we start adding in some texture or detail or other things or creatures. And this is the beauty, <laughs> the beauty of paint markers. So very opaque. Okay, so we want to get some greenery in now. I was thinking the big wavy frondy things. So I'm going to stick a couple of these in here. And then over this side, these ones are going to be more upright. I'm going to have a different type of plant here. And these are going to have leaves on them. And maybe they'll come down to here. These loop markers are so vibrant, but oh my goodness. Oh, the brown might do as well, actually. Okay, that was uh, surprising. So, okay, we're, we're going to have slightly sparkly rocks, but... I suppose uh, I suppose we can live with that, can't we? And that all you can see on the camera is the sparkle. You can't actually see the orange. Oh, if I do that, there you go. You can see it now. <laughs> it's super, super wet and super sparkly, but that's okay. And I've got some brown here as well. Okay, I'm just checking to see if this loop pen is dry and I'm going to add in some more grasses because we really want to layer these up so maybe they're going to be this sort of shape so really want these layered up so by doing a couple in each color and just going back and forth we can make a really sort of rich clump of grassy things <laughs> and you can see there that's going over the top of the dark blue and the purple without without any problems at all now I'm trying to do these randomly and it's just so that they layer up differently and I'll do the same when I put the like the highlight colors on them as well 
It just makes it a bit more interesting. I'm not really happy with my rock formation down here and I think it's because these other colours are too stark. So I'm going to take my, my thinner nibbed original shade that I used and I just want to add in some lines here and there. Obviously, I mean, stuff like this, it's never going to be realistic. It's going to be very stylized because of the type of medium it is and you, your ability to, to work with it. You know, there's only so much you can do. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can water these down and all sorts, but I'm not really into that. But that was just a bit too stark for my liking. And I feel as if if we put any wildlife on top of it or marine life, that it's just going to sort of disappear into the rock. So by just sort of almost blocking some of that out with a few hatched lines, then it's just kind of like bringing the tone of it down a wee bit and it's just not quite as obvious, which is what we what we would like at this juncture. All right, so we're going to finish off these last few leaves here and I'm going to do this rock on this side and then we get on to the interesting stuff. I'm trying to see the parts that I've missed now. It's not always that obvious. We'll find them. We'll find them. We will. They'll not escape us. Right, so we'll leave that to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to take this paler blue, eh, paler blue, good gem, the paler green that we used over here, and I'm going to use that to put in some highlights and things on our leaves here. I just want to put in some really small, fine lines. Now, interestingly, the colour of this green, it's not coming up as well in the camera. It's actually a little bit brighter than it is that you can, that you can see. Oh, we've got a splatter. Oh, well. Okay, so that's just picked out some colour quite nicely and all I want to do now is I'm just going to run a little bit down some areas of the stem and it's just to sort of bring those out a little bit. Not everywhere. Now this bottom part is almost dry enough for me to go back and fill in my gaps. Okay, so I've got my little starfish dude as if he's hanging on there and I've started my little sea urchin there. We're going to do a couple and build those up in layers. But you can see how flat the colour looks there. Once it's dry, maybe. There we go, in that light. Uh, and that's just because there's so many layers of Posca underneath it, which is absolutely fabulous. That's what we want. So I'm going to have to do one sea urchin at a time. So I've started with this uh, rather sparkly purple, and I'm going to go to like a lilac colour. And we'll leave him be. Now we're going to have a little crabby friend poking out from somewhere. And I know crabs aren't orange and lobsters aren't orange. But we're making him orange, so we'll start him off here. Maybe he's waving at us. Maybe he's waving at us. Now the question is, how many legs do crabs have apart from their claws? I think it's three plus their claws. I may be wrong. Maybe it depends on the variety of crab. Oh no, some of them have got four. Oh no, four. Oh, okay. Wrong again. I'm really not into crustaceans. Decapods. So they've got ten limbs all together. Would that be right? Yeah, four plus their claws would be five, so that makes ten, which... Okay, so I'm going to be adding in some, maybe we can't see some of his back legs though. Okay. Now you know we be giving him googly eyes, you know that. That's a given. And what I'm also going to do is just to ground him here, I'm going to take this darker colour and just give him like a little shadow under there. And I'll maybe pop in some grey round the sides. We'll maybe do two layers of white. Right, okay, I think our, uh, our little sea urchin here could do with uh, another couple of flicks. Now I'm going to take my, I've got like a bluish grey, which is this one. Oh, that was a little. And I've got the other grey as well. So if I dig that out again. And I've got this silver as well. Uh, so I've got like a bluish grey. That does look really blue actually on the camera. It's not that blue though. I call it elephant grey. It's quite like a dark blue grey. And I just want to put in some pebbles and things. I don't know how well the silver is going to show up. I was never really um, all that keen on the metallic ones of these. But we'll, we'll see how that goes. The sparkly ones are marvellous though. The other thing that I want to do as well is I wanted to put like a shadow in behind here. I don't think this grey is enough. Maybe it'd be better with the darker one actually. Yeah, okay, I'll need to wait for that to dry. That's the only thing about this, I need to wait for that to dry. In the meantime, okay, we can put some shells in though, can't we? Just looks like a blob. It just looks like a blob. Maybe, maybe a little bit of coral. So I'm gonna take my orange now. And our little crab friend here. Got a smile on his face, he's a happy chappy. I've got this pink here as well and I'm going to use this to make my shell look more like a shell. Uh, right, okay, let's go back to our sea urchins now. 
So I'm going to pop a little bit of pink in here now as well. And I'm going to repeat this process probably another twice. And that's so I can layer them up, you know, as if there's like a, like a, a cluster of them. So I think swimming in out of here, the obvious choice would be like a clownfish because they are, um, they like to swim in amongst things, don't they? And then we're going to have a bigger fish up here and our octopus. And I think that, oh, maybe our bigger fish should go here. Placement. Okay, so if we're thinking about, uh, if we're thinking about a clownfish, again, I'm going to use a reference here because I am not great with stuff like that. I know roughly what they look like. I have seen Finding Nemo. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. God dang, they're so cute. Okay, so let's have, uh, maybe their little head is, I'm just trying to think about placement. The octopus, octopus, the octopus is going to be quite big and he's going to be up here. So I think our clownfish should maybe be keeping it, peeking out from in behind here. And then maybe his tail. They've got the cutest little tails as well. They've got like little round honey shaped tails. Oh, so the, here's, here's our octopus friend. So there's his head. I think there's going to be one out the back there because otherwise we're going to be running out of space. And then we've got one that we want to come off of here. That's the one that's going to go round the side. And then maybe this one's going to be like this way. He's only got six legs just now though. That's a, or arms. We've had this discussion before about the arms and legs thing. And maybe this one coming down here and it's holding on to a bit of this grass. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So I'll fill the rest of this in. Okay, he's. I feel as if he's like not joined together enough here. So I'm gonna just thicken that up a little bit. If I zoom out a little bit, oh, this is this is actually cheering me up. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, let's go back to our little clownfish friend down here because we're gonna have to like give him some stripes and stuff. Now I've made this difficult for myself because he is tucked away in. But we'll give him a couple of stripes. Uh, we'll maybe maybe put one in there as well, actually. Do you know what? I wasn't I really wasn't happy with that tail situation, so I'm gonna make this his tail instead. And we're gonna give him his little eyes. We're gonna say hey. We could be doing some more uh, of our sea urchins as well. And of course, because I've put all the pens back, I can't find the ones I'm looking for. Barkley, that's what we're going for. I think maybe two might be enough here. Now I was gonna take this darker grey as well and try and do something with this shadow here. I say it's unfortunate that it's in such a big point, but I'm gonna do my best just to go over what's already there. Oh, well, that's not bad. I really want to give this guy like a better shadow under here as well, but it's not it's not ideal really. Okay, so now I'm thinking about where the suckers are gonna be on this guy. I'm not going to overthink this too much. If anybody has been watching the colouring chat I've been doing in Beauty of Horror, there is a, there's a lot of tentacles going on in that and I'm not going to go to that level of detail because I'm working in Posca. I think it's uh, in our interests to at least have an indication of some suckers. Okay, so I feel like I need to start padding parts of this out. Like I feel that these should be yeah, and I feel that this part should be filled in completely. It just it makes them look a bit more substantial, I think. So I'm going to give this another layer of this light colour. Right, I'm going to go down and see what I can do with my clown fish now. I think he's dry enough. Now, I do notice that they, none of them have white around their eye. Their stripe is always behind their eye, which is good for us. <laughs> that makes things a little bit easier. Wow. Should really have like tried drawing one of these first before before I started trying to draw them tiny in Posca pen in behind things. This is how not to learn to draw things, everyone. Take a lesson from me in that. He is a really long clown fish. Okay, so let's work on the other areas. So he's got black bit round his tail, and then they've got these little black fins here. The line, the line of black round there, um round their white parts, uh, you know, round each stripe. I'm not going to put them in because even with this finest Posca, it's not ideal. I'll maybe put it in with a fine liner when I'm finished. That might be a good idea. So I really like the shape of the angel fish. I think that would look quite good, but it'll also let me use some, well, we could make these fish any colour we wanted, really. Uh, but I'd like to bring some yellow in up here somewhere. So I think we'll maybe have him here. Now they're basically a triangle and then they've got little triangular tails and some of these have stripes as well. So I'll just fill this in in yellow first and we can add in the details after he's dried off a little bit. That sounded so funny. After he's dried off a bit, like he's gonna come uh, 
gonna <laughs> gonna come out the water and you know sunbathe until he's he's drip dry. <laughs> right, okay, I'm back up here to my octopus friend, and we want to give him a little bit of definition again. So this is a one M, so this is quite a fine point. And I'm not going to do anything crazy here, but I just want to, because he's he's pretty much just a just a, a big blob of lilac, bless him. So <laughs> we want to kind of define where some of these uh, some of these arms are coming out from him. So if I do this, you can see straight away that that's going to help. I'm not really applying any rule here. It's just about adding things in where I think it's going to look okay. He's going to be a surprised octopus. <laughs> okay, our angel fish still isn't dry. So I'm going to grab a fine liner now. One of the uni pins would probably be favourable. So let's see if I can put in... Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. It looks as if he's been dissected because that, uh, that green is really dark. So I'm going to take the, this lighter green and I'm actually just going to cheat a little bit here. And I'm going to bring this grassy frond and over the top. There we go, that's better. That's much better. Kind of like, uh, this is where I'm going to start to get a bit marker happy here and I'm probably going to regret some of my decisions. <laughs> I suppose while we're waiting for that to dry, I can tilt this up on its side and maybe bring this down here and just indicate where I'm going to carry on because obviously I'll have to wait till all of this is dry before I do anything about wrapping that all the way around. <laughs> Now again, for this angel fish, I think maybe the fine liner might be a better idea here. Kinda want to start fine liner and stuff. This was a bad shout. That makes me instantly happier though with the shell situation. <laughs> does. Okay, let's go back to our sea urchin. So I need to get the... I kinda forgot about him down here. I was so preoccupied with my, my octopus. Oh, that's hilarious. I did not mean to do that. Let's give him nice big, nice big like moomin eyes. Moomin eyes! Look, he's really surprised because his leg's gone off on its own off the side. That's what he's surprised about. There we go. I kind of want to start adding in, like, I want to add in some suckers in here now. And maybe one or two here. I've just remembered one of the other details I was going to add was some bubbles. So I kind of wanted, like, a big one up here. Maybe there's going to be a random bubble here. I'm really sort of into finishing touches here and I'm just kind of like, I keep adding things in. Uh, right, okay, so down here, I'm back to another layer of this. Okay, so for the details on the little angel fish, I am going to use this, this fine liner. Had I had a little bit of foresight, I would probably have done the clown fish the same way, but you live and you learn. So I'll give him his little eye. Maybe he's not an angel fish at all, maybe he's a zebra fish or something, I don't know. All I know is he looks pretty. <laughs> Let's see if we can... Oh, look how dirty the back page is. I don't know whether that's graphite or it could be anything, to be fair. Okay, so I have to, I'm having to kind of maneuver from where the part on the spine is. There we go. So obviously when it's spread out like this, it looks as if he's got like a, a bit of a, an abnormal limb, but obviously because it's going to be folded over, you're not going to see that part an awful lot. And I wanted this to be quite prominent on the back cover. I was actually going to put the um, the cave like logo sticker down here inside a clamshell, not unlike, uh, or an oyster shell even, not unlike what I did in the uh, the upcrate battle that I talked about earlier. I'll put a link to that video in the end card and down in the description if you want to go and watch that if you haven't seen it. But this video is going to be really long as it is and I'm actually physically running out of time anyway, so that's a bit disappointing. But maybe in the next one, I do have another one of these and it's yellow. And I maybe do something with that. So if that's something that you would like to see, then you need to let me know um, if you'd like to see me do another one. Or even if, if you would like one of these as a gift for someone, or should I put them in the stash shop, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your opinions on that. Um, it's something I wouldn't do a lot of these to be fair, but they are really, really fun. Like they're really enjoyable. Meanwhile, back at the sea urchin, <laughs> I need to get this pink out. Don't know, where is it? It was the really bright pink, it was this one. I had to pit stop for an apple. I'm really hungry and I didn't realise that it's 20 to 2 in the afternoon and I haven't had anything to eat since breakfast. So that's not very clever, especially when I'm taking painkillers. So please excuse my momentary crunching. I've still got my dogs to take OUT, so I think I'll wait and get some lunch once I come back in from having them taken out and run about and all the rest of it. I may just pop a little bit more. I know you guys can't see this because I'm holding on to it. I'm just going to try and even this up a little bit. I'm trying not I'm trying not to crunch while I do this, I'm sorry. So maybe his tentacles like twisted all the way around here. So that's kind of like facing out to the back. And then his big sucker's gonna be on show here. 
so I hope that makes sense to you, like you can, and you can see what I'm what I'm kind of going for there. Now, with the help of the little purple, I'm just gonna add in a few finishing touches here. Pip, stop breathing on me. <laughs> She's breathing on my leg. She's making my leg warm. She's just standing here wagging her tail. And I think, honestly, I think that's enough. I think it's subtle. Now, naturally, with this kind of surface, we are gonna have to seal it with something. And I was going to use a matte coat of Mod Podge. I only discovered Mod, well, I didn't say I discovered it. I only started using Mod Podge recently, but it's absolutely fabulous stuff. But I do have a sparkly one here. And I'm quite tempted to coat this in, uh, in a sparkly layer just to see what happens. So I'm gonna do it. So this is how we're gonna seal it. And all it's gonna do is it's gonna make the, the cover hard a bit more hard wearing because what will happen eventually is that this will start to rub and flake off. And that's just, if you're gonna use something, you know, if the notebook is gonna get used, which I would like it to be, most of you will know by now, I am a person that likes things to fulfill a purpose. I don't like things sitting languishing in a, in a cupboard unused. Um, so in order for, for, for this to fulfill its purpose, that's what we have to do. Now I'm a bit discouraged because there's a huge layer that's dried. I haven't used this. Oh wow, it's actually really sparkly. I don't know if I want to do this or not. It's, it's really sparkly. I may live to regret this. <laughs> I may live to regret this. I'm going to use a soft synthetic brush. Now this is a brush for acrylic paint and it's a Milan and it's number 16 flat if you're interested. I love the Milan paint brushes, they're great. And uh, basically I'm just gonna dip my brush in here, take off the excess and I'm just gonna sweep very gently because I'm aware that I may take up some of the, the Posca in the process if it's too wet. You do need a, quite a, a good layer on it though to, to seal it properly and coat it. I'm a bit unnerved by the, the glittery uh, particles that are here, but let's see how we go. I absolutely hate the smell of this stuff. It is a great piece of kit though, it really, really is. Now I'm trying to keep this as smooth as possible and not have very many brush strokes. That's easier said than done. And I don't want it all gathering on the edge here. So I'm like feather light, touch as light as I can possibly do here. You absolutely don't want to scrub at this because we don't want to disturb anything. And I can see that the fine liner from the fish has just, it's just spread itself out and there's not much I can do about that now. I should have thought of that. And that means it's going to be the same for our our clownfish friend. Now this should dry clear. Again, I'm, I'm kind of learning lessons here because I've never done anything like this, you know, uh, with Posca. So this is a learning experience. As I say though, I really don't like the smell of this stuff. It smells absolutely awful. Obviously I'm going to do the same with the back as well. And uh, just to, I might even just do it over the top of the leg rather than doing the whole thing. But then having the glitter on it might be quite nice. So I might change my mind about that. But once all that's done and it's dry, we'll come back and we can have a look at the final product. I'm going to go and finish my apple and walk my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I shall see you in a bit. So here is our finished article and if I just tilt it in the light you can see the sparkles. I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. Um, you can see the brush strokes on the back quite a lot but I think it's just because there's no sort of design to break it up it's just a bit more obvious but I've had so much fun doing this like this has been the best fun today. So get in touch if you would like this or if you think I should put a couple of these in the stash shop you can let me know in the comments and I will see you back on Thursday for our normal video. I will have a bonus video up on Tuesday which is the last part of our beauty of horror, horror colour and chat so you can join me on Tuesday if you fancy seeing that all finished up. All it remains to say is thank you very much for watching and please stay safe, take care of each other, bye for now.